Oh, there you go. Um, So, hello, welcome to the third recitation for section seven. And today we're going to cover these things. So we're going it's, to, it's mainly going to be about structs, but I'll also review um, Malik and free and um, staff objects versus heap objects and things like that. And because um, when I was going through the piazza, I realized that some people might be confused about that. And so first we have what is a struct. And basically a struct is a user defined data type and you could just combine different, um, different variables together and um, make a single data type. And so, and yes, yeah, so you could just give them all one name and you could declare that data type and, um, and then change those attributes. And yeah, so if you want to think of it in terms of Java, it's basically like um, objects with attributes, but um, not exactly the same. So, but you could think of it like that. And they can be used to create custom data structures and such as linked lists and things like that. And it's very useful for that. And you guys have probably already um, created a stack using uh, structs. And so, yeah, they're pretty useful. And so to declare a struct, it's this is the format. So uh, you type struct and then the name of the struct, and uh, they could have variables of the same type or variables of different types. So you could see in the name struct, um, they're of the same type, but in student, they're of different types. And um, yeah, the slides and the recording will be posted. And um, and another struct can be used as a data item in a struct. And so you could see how here in the student struct, uh, there's another struct, um, there's another attribute with, um, which is of struct name type. So that's also allowed. And so to initialize a struct, you basically just, um, so you have to type struct and then the name of the struct and the name that you want to give um, that specific struct. And it, and then, so there's two ways of initializing it. You could initialize straight up with the values. So you could put in, so name, as we saw, takes a first name and a last name. And you could give it first name, and you could enter the first name and last name um, right when you initialize it. Or you could... Um, you could just initialize it without giving it any values and then um, and then add the values in after. So here you could do name to dot first name equals Kobe and then name to dot last name and then uh, you could also initialize it that way. The second way might may be more useful for you guys because you probably won't know what um, what you need to put into the struct right when you declare it, that'll probably be something that you scan in or just just um, something that you um, that you obtain at runtime. So uh, yeah, so next up we have the type def keyword. And so before we saw that um, when initializing a struct, um, you have to add this, you have to um, explicitly say that it's a struct but the type def keyword gets rid of that. So then you could declare a struct by simply typing the name of the struct and as the data type and the name of the variable that you wanna associate with it. So um, this is equivalent to doing what we did here, but um, using this definition of the struct, using the type def keyword. And uh, when you use the type def keyword, remember you also have to uh, write some sort of name here that'll uh, that'll refer to the struct, and this that doesn't have to match the name that you give over here for the struct, but um, 
I mean, it just makes sense to match it. But if you don't want to do that, you could write any name here and then refer to it that way. Um, yeah, so it just allows for simpler initializations. It's only one word that, um, it's only a one word difference, but if you want to do it this way, you could. And then we have the arrow operator. So basically it's used to um, access and set values of pointers to structs. So, so sometimes you're gonna have cases where you have to, when you, uh, when you create a struct or, or initialize a struct, you're gonna wanna use a pointer to that struct and, or pass, that, pass a pointer to that struct over to another function to modify it. And the arrow operator makes it cleaner to do that. So, um, so basically I have an example here. So let's say you have a struct node and, and you declare the head node and you, you declare it as null initially. And then, um, and then you malloc space for that node and then you set the value of it. So because, um, because head is initially a pointer and it makes sense for head to be a pointer because, um, because in linked lists, we deal with pointers. Um, and yeah, um, I didn't um, explicitly say this, but yeah, node is going to be a node of a linked list. So um, when you have when you declare the head here, um, and then you um, and if you want to access the value of um, of the struct that this points to, you could just do head arrow value and then set the value or access it. Um, so yeah, this is. Um, this is a simpler way of doing it than using, um, than dereferencing it with the star operator because another way you could do it is do star head dot value. And um, this is just cleaner because then you don't have the star in the parentheses and the dot. You simply just use the arrow operator. And yeah, so that's basically it for um, the slides. And now I have some demo code that that I'll share with you guys and we could go over that. So let me just open that up. Okay, so do you guys see my code now on screen? All right, cool. All right, so yeah, I have the same code that I had in the slides here. And so I have a struct here called name and another struct called student. And it's the same struct as, uh, as the ones you just saw. And I declared it using the type def keyword and yeah, so basically when I wanna initialize uh, these structs, I just do name, name one equals, um, and then in, in curly braces, you put the values. And, and then if you wanna access these values, you could just do um, name one dot first name or name one dot last name, and which come from what you call them here. And, and then you can, um, the other ways to set the values after initial initialization, and uh, you can access them the same way if you choose to do it that way. And, um, and yeah, and then, so I guess I'll just, I'll just print out these names, and then I'll show you guys the rest of the code. So we can do make and the linked list part is for the next demo. So right now I'm just gonna run struct demo and you can see that the names were printed based on how we defined it in these printf statements. And now for the next part of the code. So now, now that we have these names, uh, so you could see that here in the student struct, I have another struct type called name. And um, so, now we could define as we could uh, initialize a student and um, we've already initialized these names 
so so we could um, we could use those names in the student definition in the student initialization now. So I just type student student one and um, student one equals name one and then the the age is 23 and um, and the, the person's major is computer science and and then I just print everything about that person so I print the name and the age and the major and um, yeah, it's also a good practice that if your print statements are getting too long, like if I had this all in one line, it, it would just be insanely long. So you could just hit enter and um, tab it over to make it look cleaner so that it um, it's more readable. And yeah, so, and then I also create another student, student two, and I do this um, the way I, do, I created the name without, initial, without initializing it with values. And then I set the values afterwards. So I can just set dot name equal to name two. And um, yeah, and if I wanted, I could even do, if I didn't have a, another name already created, I could also just do student two dot name dot first name and set that equal to um, whatever I wanted. And, um, and same thing for the student's uh, last name. And um, so this is also acceptable. You don't actually have to declare um, declare the name explicitly before you can create the other struct. You could just set those, um, those other fields separately. Mm, yeah, and then I'll just print out both of these and you could see the output. So I'll type make again and I'll run struct demo. And you could see that for, uh, these are the na names we initially defined. In student one, the name, uh, age and major are here and student two, the name, age and major are here. And here we replaced um, name two with these um, different first and last names. So uh, those are the ones so th that's the name that showed up here. So that's just a quick intro to structs. And does anyone have any questions about them? Okay, so if there's no questions about this demo, then we can move on to the next demo I have, which is, um, which is creating a linked list in C. <clears throat> and I decided to um, to show you guys how to do this because I think it covers a lot of important things that we learned and that will be useful to you guys later on. And so let's see. And we could, okay, yeah, so Basically, uh, this allows you to cover concepts such as double pointers and um, and uh, passing a struct over to another function or passing uh, the pointer to a struct over. And, um, and it also covers malloc and freeing structs or just any sort of data type in general. And yeah, so basically I start off with this struct called node. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. So you don't actually need this node here in front, node star in front of malloc. Um, this is just, um, so before C99, I think uh, you had to explicitly um, write, uh, you, you had to explicitly cast the return type of malloc to whatever you wanted it to be here. But I don't think you need to do this anymore. But um, uh, it's, it's okay if I get rid of this. But um, it's just more explicit that way if you if you put it there. Um, yeah, so, okay. Um, so let's start off with the main method here. So I create the head node of the linked list and then I initialize a node pointer called head 
and I set it to null. And um, this is this is the um, the uh, the way we create linked lists in C. We um, you don't create just the node. You usually create the pointer to the node, which makes more sense because linked lists deal with pointers. So um, when we create a new node, so, so we could just set pointers. Um, so we could just set the next pointer easily. And yeah, so the node that I created up here, it has two fields. It has int value, which is just the value that the node takes, which is some sort of number. And I have the, the next node. And yeah, so basically we'll just use the next to link it to the next node over. And this will just be a pointer to another node. Uh, yeah, this, this code will be uploaded too. I'll create a folder in the file section under section seven and post all the um, and post the presentation and the code there. And I'll also post the recording in on another page that I created on Canvas. You could see it in one of my announcements if you want to uh, find the link to that page. Um, okay, yeah. So we create um, we create the head node, and then so. Uh, yeah, so for head, I malloc. Um, okay, yeah, so th this actually isn't necessary, but it's just more clear because um, malloc, when you, when you call malloc, it returns a pointer of type void star. And you could actually uh, cast that to any type. But um, now C does that automatically, so you don't actually need to write this, but it just makes it clearer. Um, yeah, so. So you call the malloc function and you give it a size of how much space you want. And so let's say you want, and so yeah, for, for a node pointer, so it should point to a space as large as um, the size of a node, right? So we give it the size of a node and um, yeah, so we just call malloc and we declare that much space. Um, yeah, and then you set head dot value equal to, I just set head dot heads value equal to 100. And, um, and yeah, so you, you could see here that, um, that um, instead of doing, instead of writing it as head dot value. Okay, yeah, so VS Code actually um, automatically does this for me. But if I just wrote head dot value, that wouldn't make any sense because head is actually a pointer to a pointer to a node. So you can't, um, so it doesn't actually have those data fields. But um, so what doing this is actually doing under the hood is it dereferences, it dereferences head and then gets the value of that. So it's actually, um, so that you dereference head and then you can get the value of head and it sets that equal to 100. So this right here is just um, is just a cleaner way of um, of doing this. So I guess I could just write that as a comment to this. Um, so this is basically just syntactic sugar uh, or that. So that's what the arrow that's how the arrow operator is used. And we just set the next of head equal to null right now because we don't actually have another another node that we could use. So uh, the next thing I want to do is insert a new node into my linked list. So I will, um, so I can declare this function called insert node. And so I'll show you guys how that function works. And I actually have two different, um, two different types of that function. And I'll show you why I have these two different types. And uh, the uses of both of them. So um, this is the first one that I have, and this um, will be initially easier to understand. But um, um, but yeah, there's another way of doing the same thing, which is also um, a pretty neat way of doing it. So the first one's insert. So I have this function. It takes a, a pointer to a node, which is specifically the head node, the beginning node of the linked list. And it takes a value, and this val variable actually stores. It's the value that you want to set the new node to. So, um, so now in here, I want to insert a node. So the first thing I'm going to do is, of course, create a new node, 
and I'll just call a new node to make things clear. And I'll also malloc a size um, uh, a size of um, the node struct for that. And I'll set the value of new node equal to val using the arrow operator because this is a pointer. And um, and then the next thing I'll do is I'll point um, I'll say new node uh, new nodes next equals the head so that um, new node moves to the beginning of the linked list and um, and I'll point head to the first node. So um, so yeah, pointing head to the no, I mean um, pointing head to that new node will then uh, move it will then um, make that the new node and we'll, we'll, th we'll then make new node the first node and then head will be the second node because that node's next will be head. And, and then I'll just return head because this function returns a type node star. And um, so now I'll return this new head. So this new head should now um, hold the value of new node in it and new nodes next will be head. So it, it's been, will be the old head. So now it's been set, um, now it's been appended to the front. Mm, and then we can see down here that, um, so I, I set the original head equal to the head that was, um, that was returned by insert node. So because, um, because uh, the, the head value was changed and returned there, so we need to set this head equal to that return value. So we could keep our changes in, um, in the main method now. And, and then I'll just, um, I'll just print out what values I have in my nodes and then I'll free it. But um, yeah, so I'll go over the print list and free list functions now. So, so I have this function called print list. And so what this function does is it takes a it takes um, it takes the head pointer of your linked list, and um, it initializes a um, it initializes a node of type PTR. And also, um, I included these um, struct the the struct keywords here because I just wanted to emphasize that even if you uh, declare um, a struct using type def. You don't have to declare it using just the name of the struct. You could also, you could, you're still allowed to put struct. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So after after I cover this um, this demo, if, if there's time, I can try to write up a program to do to read the numbers and make notes. Mm, yeah, so, yeah, so, and then I set a previous pointer to null, and then, um, and then I just have, um, I just iterate over the linked list until, um, until the current pointer becomes null, and um, every time I iterate over it, I, I, um, I set, um, I print out the value of the current node and um, I set previous to the pointer and um, and I move the pointer up one spot. And then I just print a new line at the end of the function. So, so yeah, this is just the, the print list function. And yeah, so when I call this function, it'll, It'll print the list for me, so I guess we could just run this and and see what the output is. So yeah, when we print this, um, we know that um, that the new node that we inserted had a value of 99, and the original node had a value of 100. So now it's printing from head to tail. So the the first um, the first value is 99, and the the next value is 100, and so that's how the print list function works. And, and after you print the head, um, or after you print the link, linked list, you also need to free it before you, um, before you exit your program. So I wrote a little function here to free, um, to free a linked list. And, um, and this can also be used in, 
your um in your programs which is uh, such as the um the balanced program in the first programming assignment and so uh yeah so this basically is just um, a general function to free a linked list so you give it the pointer to the first node which is the head and um and then i create a temp node which um which i'll be using to um to free the list and I set the temp node initially equal to the head node. So now this temp node um, points to the same thing as the first node in the list. And, and then I have a while loop that um, runs until head becomes null. So we go through all the nodes in the list. And what I do is I set temp node equal to head. Um, so the first time I did this here, um, <clears throat> so the first time the while loop runs, this is kind of redundant because we already set it equal to the head. But um, but in the next iterations, when when I set head equal to <clears throat> when I set head equal to the next of head, I'll need to reset temp node to the new head. So um, this is only redundant in the first iteration. But um, but yeah, after that, it um, it's <clears throat> um, yeah after that it's fine. And then yeah after that it's um, it sets the value correctly. And then the third line in the while loop just frees temp node. And um, so, so I free the node every time I iterate to the next one. And so the, the previous one keeps getting freed and the head moves to the next one. So, um, so as we go through the linked list, um, we keep freeing the nodes behind um, where we currently point to. And so once head hits null, it'll stop and the entire list will be freed. <clears throat> and yeah, so, and then we can just um, return out of this function or it could be a void function, but um, it doesn't really matter. And yeah, so that'll free the entire list for you. And, and then you can just exit out of the function. So um, how do I pronounce my name? It's Abhinav. So yeah, that works. Um, uh yeah and then okay yeah so remember how i talked about the two different methods yeah no problem um and yeah so any code i include in in the demo code you guys are free to use in um in your programs um and you could base your programs off of stuff from here which is um which i hope should be helpful and yeah, so this we the first time we did the um, insertion of a new node, um, we did it using the first method. But now let's do it using this other method, which um, you could see that it actually doesn't set the head value here equal to any value returned from the insert node method. So that's because the insert node to method is of type void. It doesn't actually return anything. But um, so the thing here is instead of passing, instead of passing a node pointer, we pass um, the pointer to that pointer over into the function and we pass in the new value that we wanna set. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so the first part's the same. We just, uh, we create, the new node set the value equal to val, and then we point it to the current head. But here we point it to the current head um, um, by just um, by just doing this. But in this case, we want to point it to the um, we want to point it to uh, the current head. But um, the head variable here is a pointer to head. So. Um, so we need to dereference that and get head out of it. And, and then we set the next of new node to that dereferenced value, which is doing the same thing as this, but, um, um, but um, you have to dereference it this time because it's a pointer to the pointer. And then um, we, do the we, do the same, uh, we do the same last step. We set head equal to the new node, but we set um, the dereferenced version of head equal to the new node. And so what this is doing is uh, if you just passed um, the original head, which we did here, and, um, and if we did, um, 
if we didn't use a pointer to the pointer, the, the changes that we would make here would just, um, would just disappear in the main method. So I can demonstrate that. So let's say whatever I returned here, um, let's say I did it using the original method, but I didn't set head equal to that. Then when I run this, um, it'll actually not add the new node. It just prints um, the value in the head that was originally there. So what we have to do is set um, head equal to that. So what we could do here is uh, here we don't have to actually set head equal to the new um, the node returned because there is no node returned because we used um, we use the pointer to the pointer which allows us to directly modify um, the original head pointer value. So uh, it gives us more flexibility with how we want to structure our code. And yeah, so if you do it this way, um, you actually don't have to return the new node and all the changes you make here will be, um, will carry over to the main method. So after we call it like this, and um, even if we don't set head and we call the rest of these functions, our result should be exactly the same as the other one. And we could see that just the way it was 99 and 100 before, it's 99 and 100 again. So um, that's the use of doing the pointer to pointer method. But um, if you're more comfortable using this method, that's fine too. But this is just um, another another way of doing it. And um, yeah, so that's how, that's how that works. And yeah, so it's up to you guys which method you want to use in the future if we, um, if you need to use linked lists for anything, which I think you will. And yeah, so that's the end of this demo code. And that's all I had planned for recitation today. Um, so do you guys have any questions about this code? Uh, quick question. I think this is adding on to what someone else said about reading from a file, using versus mm -hmm. reading from a file. Um, what if you want to, so, if save the nature of the save the nature of the linked list is dynamic, and say if you want to like, so uh, how would you like uh, manually? How would you like uh, write code to read uh, to read numbers as they're inputted? To read like yeah. well anything inputted numbers strings whatever, mm -hmm. and then like have that automat and then have your uh, have the linked list automatically create a new node to store that to store that data. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so I could try to write a, a piece of code here real quick to um, um, to read numbers from a file. So I'll just write a, let's create a file, call it, um, let's call it values.txt. And I guess in here, I'll just put some values that we want to put in the node and or in the list, then I'll just put like one, um, two, what is happening? Oh, that's the line number. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And okay, so uh, I guess the first thing we do is at the top of the file, we're gonna declare a, um, a file pointer and we're gonna use the fopen function to let's say open a file from from argv and mm, yeah and then we could um oh, to me. hold on let me just take a look at something just give me one second Oh, right, right, yeah, we have to, we have to say that we're reading from the file. Okay, um, uh, thanks for that. And let me just pull something up real quick. So I don't, so this could go faster, so I don't make any mistakes. So I'll just, um, I'll just copy this code from the other file that I have. And right, okay. Mm. Okay. 
And yeah, so I open the file pointer and I'll pass nums.txt into that. And then the next thing I'll do is, okay, yeah. So now I guess I'll set up a while loop to, um, to read, um, to read the, to read from the file. So I'll call fscan f to do that. I'll pass in the file pointer. I'll pass in the kind of value I want to read. I want to read a an integer, and I want to I'll store that into a variable called um, called buff. And so I'll put that in there, and then inside the while loop. I will, um, okay, and then I'll also say while this actually returns a digit. Uh, buff doesn't have to be an array, it could be anything. I mean, I, I'm just storing it into um, into a variable here. This could be like scan num or something, whatever you want it to be. I just called it buff for now. So it, it's like a buffer that, um, that the value is gonna go into after it gets scanned. And then I guess every for every iteration of this, I'll just call insert node. And I guess I'll use the second one. Um, also, also I have to create the head before I do any of this. So I create the head um, and then I do, I do this and an insert node two takes a pointer to head. So I will pass that in and <clears throat> mm, yeah, so I'll just I'll just pass that in, and I'll <clears throat> mm. and yeah, the next thing I'll do is just um, and then I want to pass in uh, the value, so I'll do. Okay, and then I'll just pass in buff here because buff is the value that um, I want the new node to have because I'm reading from the file to insert all of these new nodes. And yeah, so I'll just comment out these for now. So we'll just have our initial, no initial node and, and then I'll scan in the rest of these nodes. So I guess I could just call the initial node zero and then I'll scan in the rest of these nodes. And I think that should do it. So we'll try running this and see what happens. All right. Um, F scan F takes the pointer to a to a variable. So I'll run make and then I'll call dot slash link list. Oh yeah. Um, I have to pass in I have to pass in the file that I want to read. Or I call the values dot txt right. Okay, yeah, it's fine if you have to leave. If you if you don't have to if you don't have questions about this, it's okay if you want to leave right now. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so we could see that um, when we call the linked list um, this program with the values.txt being passed into it, um, I I get all the all the um, all the values from my for my text file here. And this was, and so right now the only function I have is to insert to the beginning. I could write another function to append it if that's what you wanna do when you insert a node. Or um, so you could write any sort of function to insert these values. But yeah, so this is basically the structure. You create the file pointer, open up the value. Um, you create a buffer that you wanna store your number in. And, and then you just call your, um, and then you could do whatever you want with that number. And I, I set this equal to while f scan f returns a value of one, because I want to um, because um, I want to keep going until a value is actually read. Um, why were the numbers in reverse order? It's because um, it's because uh, the function that I have right and someone else asked the question. Okay, yeah. So this is the um, insert node function. But um, yeah, so the code's adding each value to the front of the list. 
So, um, so the initial value is zero. And then I add, um, the, it adds the value one to the front of the list and then it adds two. So now you, so then you have two, one, zero and then uh, three, two, one, zero. And then it just keeps going on like that. But if I had another function that would append the value to the end of the list, then it would, um, it would be in the correct order or whatever. Um, I mean, anything could be the correct order. It depends on what you're trying to do. So yeah, so that's basically it. And I'll post this code and I'll post this part too if you guys want it, if you guys want that. I'll post the text file and everything. And yeah, so that should be. So yeah, does anyone have any other questions? Okay, so yeah, I, I can show you how to transfer files using FileZilla. And yeah, so if you guys don't have any questions or don't, um, or uh, yeah, so you guys can leave if you don't have any questions now. And yeah, so I'll, I'll show you how to transfer files using FileZilla. So I'll open up, um, I'll open up my FileZilla and I will share the screen with you. So Give me one second. Okay, so you should be able to see my whole screen now. And I know my recitation three. You are not required to use a stack for um, for problem for the balanced problem. Um, if you want, you could, but that's just um, it's just recommended, and it's just um, some initial code that the professor wanted to give so people could get started off of it. But if you have a different method of doing it, that's fine. Um, yeah. So in in the first uh, set of slides I posted on uh, on Canvas. I actually went over how to move the files. And um, so this is this basically tells you how to do that. And so I'll go over to my FileZilla. And in the host, you want to type um, ilab.cs.ruckers.edu. And for the username, you want to type your net ID. Uh, password, you want to type your um, ilab password, which is your Rutgers CS password. So. I will type that in. And for the port, you want to put 22, and then you just hit quick connect. And it, it connects directly to your iLab. And um, here on the left side, you see everything on your local machine. And on the right side, you see the stuff on your, um, on your, on iLab. So if you want to move any files over, um, you could easily do that from here. So let's say I want to go into this folder and I want to move link list.c over to um, over to let's say the downloads folder here. Right. Then I'll just um, I'll just right click on link list.c and I'll click upload. And there you go, it's on iLab. And um, you saw that I already had this file on iLab. And if you want to get it onto your own computer, you could just right click it and click download and it'll show up on your computer here. And so if I open recitation three, I'll see that I had the file that I got from iLab. And it's called sent to iLab because um, that's what I called it in a previous demo. Yeah, no problem. Mm. Yeah, so are there any other questions? Yeah, no problem, Brian. 
I'm glad you're learning. Yeah, you guys can uh, leave if there's no other questions. And I guess I'll stop the recording now and it should be up. Um, it should be up tonight.